Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. 15 seconds of Rocky there, heralding another bout of watch boxing. If you're a regular here, perhaps you watched a couple of my videos a couple of weeks ago. The first was another installment in my ongoing quest to create the perfect Seiko SKX. Although my perfect SKX is the smaller one, the 38mm 013. That same week, I also reviewed a Kickstarter project, the Hudson by Main, a 38mm dive watch that had a lot of the specifications of the Seiko SKX. I had a bit of an epiphany. I was spending my time and money modding the SKX to match the specs of the Hudson that I could have bought straight off the shelf. So, what better reason than for 10 rounds of watch boxing between these two pieces? Let's get into it. So seconds out round one then, watch boxing between the main and my modified Seiko SKX 013. Certainly not heavyweights today, this 38mm diameter, I'm putting them somewhere towards middleweight, perhaps not bantamweight, we'll reserve that for the little 34mm. These guys coming in somewhere in the middle of the pack. Now as valid as the boxing analogy is going to be for the rest of the video today, I think there's also a valid motoring analogy if you will permit me it. This is very much like comparing a Golf GTI to a fully hotted up base model Honda Civic. You can either buy the one off the shelf with the big motor, or you can buy the base model and mod it yourself, spending heaps of time and money on it, but probably never quite getting it up to the standard of the off the shelf one. Let's get on with it. If you've seen one of my previous head to heads, this should all look pretty familiar. 10 rounds maximum score in each round of 10, giving a maximum total score of 100. But I'm a pretty tough judge, uh, not frightened to give fours and fives when appropriate. So we're gonna start with a bit of contextualization as always, get you an idea of where I'm going with these ones. My uh, scoring here is based on what I think is the best you can expect for the price. So for example, the movement. The main contains the ETA 2824. This watch costs $425. The Seiko with the current set of mods costs around $350 US dollars. I think at this price, the best movement that you can hope to find is the ETA 2824, hence the 10 out of 10. The 7S26 in the Seiko, on the other hand, is just about the worst movement you could expect if you're spending between $350 and $425 on a watch. In fact, the only things that would get lower than this, in my opinion anyway, are a Chinese special and the Miyota 8. 215, they would score one and two. So three for the Seiko, 10 for the main, giving it a, a pretty hefty lead from the off. Do you understand where I'm going? Let's get on with it then. Build quality and fit and finish. This one, seven for the main, six for the Seiko. As noted in the review of the main, this is not a luxury watch. There are some, not rough edges, but certainly areas that could be improved upon. In the main, the brushing on the lugs, for example, is a little bit rougher than I might have hoped for, but nice chamfered edges there. Overall, the case is pretty decent. No gap between the end links and the lugs. So overall, the quality and feel of the main is, is pretty solid, hence a seven today. Now the Seiko on the strap code scores a six, losing one point to the mains seven. Again, brushing is adequate, not bad finishing on the case, nice bit of polish there, very smooth cases on these Seiko SKXs. But even with the strap code bracelet, there's a, a little bit of rattle there between the, the links and the, the case itself, so only scoring a six. Now I touched on the bracelet in that last category, looking at the overall fit and finish of the watch. But if you're buying a watch and a bracelet, then it's obviously a big component of the, the purchasing decision. So it's worth a category in its own right. And there we are, dead heat six each for the bracelets on the two pieces today. The bracelet on the Hudson is nice to look at, nice satinized finishing throughout, but it loses marks because of, at the moment, a slightly rudimentary butterfly clasp. I'll be interested to see what they do with this one when the Kickstarter project goes live and only push pins today as opposed to screw links, so it gets a six. This is my freshly purchased strap code super Oyster mill tap bracelet for the SKX, but again only getting a six today. The milling on the end links could be sharper. There is a little bit of flex here. Uh, screw pins though, so it does gain a point or two back from that, and a milled clasp, a proper milled clasp, but a little bit rattlier, a little bit looser than I had anticipated for my 70 US dollars, so it's only getting a six as well today. From bracelet to bezel then, another crucial component on a dive watch. And for this one, the Seiko begins to claw back some of that deficit to the main, scoring eight to the main's six. 
Nothing wrong per se with the bezel on the main, 120 click, unidirectional, all very nice, no back play, but only an aluminium insert and no loom pit there, which does rather limit its functionality. Very much in keeping with the aesthetic though, but nonetheless a six. But there's nothing that feels quite like the bezel action of a Seiko SKX. Again, 120 click, unidirectional, but quite unique feeling, notchety and ratchety. And this one, beginning to pay back some of the money I've dropped in mods with a ceramic insert, getting it an eight today. Segwaying neatly into Loom, and again the Seiko comes back, some of those mods paying dividends, this one getting an astounding nine to the main seven. So the mains loom, as you see here, is a pre-production example with C1. I'm giving it a seven speculatively based on what Sebastian has told me will look like with the C3. Looks pretty good, but no bezel loom and no pip loom either. Whereas, thanks to that loom ceramic bezel insert, this Seiko is all about the loom. Loomy Bright is outstanding anyway, nicely complemented by the extra loom on that ceramic bezel. Really gives the watch a lot of presence at night and a nine. Dial and hands then, you're gonna be staring at this face for years to come. Is it a pretty face? Well, I think the main a little prettier than the Seiko, so it gets a seven today compared to the Seiko six. I do rather like the dial of the main. Just a printed dial, but with applied indices. Some lovely Art Deco style hands. Very nice indeed there. I do like also the fact that they've chosen not to frame the date window at three. Very much vintage styling. Also appreciate the Rehaut style with the chapter ring. Couple of different colors there, but nothing too invasive. Certainly a face I could stare lovingly at for years to come. The Seiko on the other hand today, representing function rather than fashion, lumpy indices, slightly disproportionate throughout, but you can't argue with its legibility, hence the six. On to the crystal then, and it's just as well I replaced the hard legs in the SKX, otherwise it would be getting a drubbing again today. As it is, it loses out by one point, the main gaining a nine, the Seiko gaining an eight. A lovely looking piece of domed box sapphire crystal in the main gains it all nine of those points today. No AR coating on this one, but that's a deliberate choice because it is a vintage retro style piece. I also chose not to add AR coating when I swapped out the hard legs for this little piece of domed sapphire crystal from Crystal Times Horology, my favorite purveyor of all things sapphire. But eight out of 10, not quite as attractive as the box dome of the main, but certainly a vast improvement over the hard legs, again, justifying some of those extra dollars dropped on the Seiko. Talking of dollars then, surely that has some kind of bearing on the outcome today. Indeed it does, there's a section called value. Now, as mentioned, if you get the early bird 425 US dollars, I'm gonna judge this watch on that basis. And for $425, I think it gets an eight. The only thing drawing it back are the fact that it doesn't have Swiss made on the dial. Now the Seiko, let's say 200 plus for the base model, uh, plus 40 for the loom ceramic bezel insert. 40 for the crystal and $70, coming in nearly then at $350. Not really such a great value equation when you think about it, especially when you're hampered by that dog rough 7S26 movement, hence the five. But surely with brand and X factor as the last two categories, this is Seiko's time to shine. This is its time to claw back some lost ground to the main. And indeed it does, though not quite as much as perhaps you'd think. Brand, micro brand, three out of 10. Let's be honest, they're not on their first watch. There are a couple of well-regarded moon phases already in existence from the company, but with micro brands, they have zero brand identity, hence a three for the main. It'll steadily tick up over the years, I'm sure, if they continue to produce decent watches like this one. Now Seiko's getting a seven, lots of brand identity, but at 400 US dollars, you're probably looking at something a little better than Seiko, to be honest, to, to score an eight, a nine, or indeed a 10 here. So we're only gonna give the Seiko a seven, but what about the X factor? Well, again, the Seiko draws a couple back, I think really for the fact that you've done the mods yourself. You've chosen this watch tailored to your specifications and it's unique. There is only one of these watches in the world, well, more or less, hence an eight. That is the, the X factor really of modifying your own watches. 
you've done the work yourself and there's nothing else quite like it. The main gets a six really for that ETA 2824. So we've got a 10 in the movement category and a six for the X factor. That really is its ace card. So what does that bring the overall scores to? Well, perhaps they're a little closer than you had anticipated. Certainly perhaps a little closer than I had anticipated when I was putting this round of watch boxing together. 69 for the main, 66 for the Seiko. So what conclusions can we draw from this head to head today? Well, the power of the ETA 2824 really is the star of the show here today. There's no better movement for $400 and that drags the score of the main up considerably. But the Seiko, if you're doing the mods yourself, you can put in a heap of loom and it's got that X factor because you've spent the money on it because there's only one watch quite like that one. If I do get around to putting an NH36 in the Seiko, it'll score a couple of points more than it did today, but the value will take a dint, so it'll probably work out just about the same. So there is something to be said after all for modifying the base Honda Civic, but the sensible money is on the Golf GTI. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.